So let's take a look at the C-sharp code and how it all works within the script task. Now I know I said it at the outset of the last video, but just in case somebody's coming into this one, this video is for the C-sharp folks. The next video in this class is for the VB folks, the Visual Basic. So if you want to just focus on the VB, then skip this video, go to the next one. If you are a C-sharp person, you can probably skip the VB video unless you just are interested. <laughs> it's going to be the exact same content in both videos. Okay, so I'm assuming that you want to be a C-sharp person. So let's just create a new integration services project. I'll drag a script task over here and let's just talk about what happens in the environment behind the scenes how it all kind of works here. Alright so when we double click on it the default language is C sharp. Now one thing once you click this edit script button whatever language you have chosen up here cannot be changed. So if you accidentally click the edit script and want to come back and say oops I wanted it to be VB sorry. You know, the, these are so easy to do that it's just to delete it and drag another one on here, change it to your language, and hit edit script. So that's one issue uh, that you kind of have to remember. Uh, let me get this back. Come over here for the C Sharp crew here. Okay, so let's talk about what the entry point does. The entry point, as we also talked about in the last video, it simply defines where or what is the method that SSIS kicks off on startup? So when the script task is run, it's going to execute, SSIS is going to execute the main method in your script. This is normal. This is actually a fairly common entry path. Uh, if you ever did any old C++ programming, you almost always started with a main method. Uh, it's just very common. There is very few times that you would change the name of this. Um, I can think particularly of ones that I've used in the past. Uh, for example, um, not the right one I wanted to do. Uh, here's an example. Let's say that we have a package called SSIS um, export and FTP. And the first step would be to export out a text file, then zip it up, and then three upload. Okay, so using an FTP. We've covered all of that actually through the course. Uh, we've covered the upload using the FTP task. Well, the FTP task does have a few limitations. It's not going to do everything that you want. If you wanted to, if you want to make it really flexible, you could write your own script in C Sharp. So you could actually write the code using the system.net namespace and you could FTP it or you could use a third party uh, library to do all of your FTP. Not difficult at all, gives you a lot more flexibility. Things like um, you, know, you could do SFTP, uh, the secure FTP, uh, you can enable SSL, you can do a lot of different things that the FTP task won't allow but you have to drop down and actually write the code. So if I was doing that though, if I'm doing this in a script task for example, so let's just say uh, I've decided to do this with a script task. Well, I might have different methods that I would run depending on where the file is located. So for example, I want to run just a plain old internet FTP. I'm going to run an internet FTP method and that handles everything about my uploading. If I want to do SFTP, then I probably would have a different method to do SFTP. If I wanted to do a local directory drop or a network directory drop, meaning I, I still want to do a file copy or transfer, but I'm not actually going to use FTP. I'm really going to use more of a backslash, backslash, server, backslash, share then I might have three different methods in my script task and in my expression syntax I would say which one that I wanted to use. So I might have like up here hanging off the top I might have a variable called um, for which method. 
and then coming out of the zip it up step, I might have a, an expression precedence constraint that says if, you know, the var which method equal SFTP, then set over here, okay, I would set this entry point equal SFTP. So this would be one way in which we could have a single script task instead of three script tasks. Because that would be an option too, right? I mean, we could set it up to where uh, I'm running out of uh, things here. Let me make a, a new page here. Um, we could set it up. One option would be like our, our data flow task here, so DFT, to do the export of a text file. And then we'd have a execute process to zip it up. And then depending on what actually happened, I could do this. Give me just a second to draw it out and you'll, you'll see. So I could say um, script task 1 to do regular FTP. And then I'd have a separate script task 2 to do SFTP. And then I'd have a third script task uh, to do ST3 for network. OK, that works. And I would just use an expression right here. These would be all expression constraints that said, depending on whatever the value of that variable is, this is the one I load. This works. Or I could just do the same thing, actually. Um, let me see if I can do this fairly easily can't. <laughs> um, oops. So here's my data flow and then my zip, right? So data flow and zip. And then I can have a single script task, right? So there's my script task. And in that script task, I simply use the expression right here to say, I want you to load up this particular entry point. Did I just go too far with that? Did I go pretty deep? <laughs> you didn't really want to know that much. Well, now you know. <laughs> you know the details of how the entry point works. It's fairly simple. Uh, one thing about this, you are welcome to change it right here, but it will not automatically generate a method with that name. So it still actually generates a main method, and you now have to come back and change that name to match what you typed in. So you can actually run this, and it runs, uh, it validates fine, but it runs with a failure with an invalid entry point. Okay. So just make that, just do a copy and paste, really. So copy, come down here to your script, paste, and it'll work fine. There you go. Okay. Kind of silly, but that's how it actually works. I'm going to take it back to main, though. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the script that is actually generated. Uh, some of the times I will just flat out remove the comments because they're just kind of, I don't really need them. Other times, I don't care. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a uh, reason to keep them in there, so I may just delete them. Up here are our using directives. This defines which namespaces we bring in. We're going to cover the concept of third-party assemblies a little later. Uh, but you might need these because in your main you might want to create a string builder class. So you could say r equals new string builder. And you don't have it here, so you're going to get a little red squiggly line. And so we could either come up here and say using system.text. And then instantly it turns blue and we can actually see it. Or if you're just using it one time, you might just want to come down here and do that. So you can fully qualify it. Okay. Uh, you won't change your namespace here. That really doesn't matter. You could see this is a C-sharp project uh, file. Uh, this is the script main class. You won't change that either. 
The other thing that you won't change, but it's good to understand what it is, is the script results enumerator. Uh, this script results is referenced down here. So the task, once the main method, the entry point runs, the task then has to return whether it was successful or whether it fails. So success is zero. So if the task result is zero, then the task runs successfully. If the task result is one, then it returns a failure. So this enumerator here, success and failure, are really just zero and one. You could run that. That'd be kind of silly. Okay. Runs and runs just fine. Would be kind of foolish to do that, I think. But it works, right? In fact, you could get rid of this enumerator. This whole VSTA generated code can go away. And you could just say, send back zero. I think that's a little bit much. I don't think that you need to be really worrying about that. Sure, it makes for a little cleaner bit of code here, but now you've got to really have a comment. Zero means success. <laughs> I think that's a little bit uh, silly, but it does actually work. So, you know. Maybe you are okay doing it. I don't know. I would think it would be pretty weird if somebody were to actually, if I loaded up their code and saw this part of it here. Uh, feel free to create other classes in here. Uh, you can work with static members. You can execute other methods. You can do all kinds of stuff in here, just like you normally would in a C-sharp file. Uh, you can browse. You know, There's only the main method, but you could see any properties or methods uh, appear in the list. I think that's really it. Um, uh, one other thing that I will share with you is using an expression here. So let's say that I have uh, another entry point method. And we say that the task result is equal to 1, and 1 means failure. Okay. I can determine which of these gets loaded. Um, I tell you what, no, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm just going to do this um, with an expression. So I'm going to come over here to the expression. I'm going to the properties, and it's called the entry point property. So I go to my expressions. I choose the entry point, and I'm going to say I want it to be another entry point, and that's the one that I want to load up. And so when I run it now, it's going to fail because I told it to return a failure result. Okay, we told it to return one, which was a failure. If we go back to the expression and say, either delete the expression. Oh, that's for the package there. We want to choose the script task. Uh, you can see it did actually make the entry point another entry point. Uh, if we go back and change this or delete it, and resync this back to main, then it will return success because it runs the main method. So now you know, I kind of, I think, have a good introduction to the basic generated code. Skip the next video. Don't, don't even worry about the VB video. And I'll see you on the other side. And let's talk about how to do variables.